You're listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, a podcast for citizens with like minds who love God, follow Christ, and have a desire to be an ambassador for the kingdom of heaven on earth. We are John and Charlene Donaldson. We're teachers building a kingdom community. Thank you again for joining us. Now let's adjust our crowns. I see thousands coming to the Bahamas, thousands upon thousands, to learn how to lead with excellence. I see it. You see a church. I don't see a church. I see a community of leaders who are demonstration prototypes of what leadership is on. That's why this church will be filled with millionaires. Everybody will either be a millionaire or close. Why? Because you, you got to be a demonstration. Your success is inevitable. God has to make you succeed. The call on this ministry demands that you learn the principles of discipline and development and success. You have to, because you cannot preach what you are not. Everybody cannot come to this church, and I don't want everybody here. I'm looking for no big church. Christ had 12, and he kept them. That's all he wanted was 12. He lost one. He was not after volume. He was after value. Great groups never change the world. It's always the few. With vision, eh? Tell your neighbor, you can't see what I see. But if you saw what I saw, you would shake my hands right now. Go ahead, shake the hand right now. Some of you are sitting in this room, sitting on a bench, staring in the distance. Anybody sitting on the bench? All those sitting on the bench, let me see your hands. Say, Lord, I see it. See, once you see it, then it controls your life. This statement is very interesting to me. Vision is the capacity to believe what you cannot see and prepare and plan for it. <laughs> Vision is the capacity to believe in what others cannot see physically with your eyes, but you start planning and preparing for it. Now, You don't wait till it comes to prepare. Write this down. Preparation is proof of belief. Preparation is proof of belief. You do not believe until you prepare. I don't care what you tell me about what you're thinking about. Until you prepare for it, you don't believe it. Write this down. Preparation is the highest act of faith. Preparation is what? The highest act of faith. When you believe something, you prove it by preparing for it. That's why you prepare yourself with education. Because you got a vision of something. That's why God is telling some of you to go back to evening school. Because your dream demands some more information. Sometimes you got to prepare by changing your friends. Because them ones you with, they ain't going nowhere and they want you to go with them. Have you ever made a resolution like this, New Year's resolution? I will change my friends. 
I did. I changed my friends years ago. I said, man, these people ain't going nowhere. So I changed my friends. Because your association determines your destination. Your associations determine your destination. That's why vision is so powerful. It disciplines everything in your life. You got to be with people who think big if you want to do big things. Say amen. Let me tell you something. Nothing is worse than an optimist keeping friends with a pessimist. That's, right, sir. That's a formula for depression. <laughs> you don't want to be with anybody else in your past who ain't going to a future, brother. It's okay to leave losers. But ever since you started going to BFM, you don't come around us no more. That's true. That's supposed to happen. And ever since you started going to that place and that man teaching that funny thing, you don't talk to us no more. You don't even come around the family much no more. That's right. You can't go up by going down. Y'all ain't listening to me. You can't move forward by going backward. Them folks, ain't, they, they, they got all kind of weights on their legs. They got chain with a ball on it. And they want you to wear yours too. Tell your neighbor, cut your chain today. You got to leave them people in mind. That's why I love eagles, boy. Eagles don't flock. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Eagles ain't no pigeon. Pigeons flock. That's why they never fly high. Always in a group. Eagles all by themselves. That's why they're called the eagle of vision. They could see better than any other bird. Because their perspective is the highest. Tell your neighbor, I hope you are an eagle. Or take your pigeon somewhere else. You don't want to hang around people who ain't going nowhere, praise God. And remember this, you become what you keep hearing. Some of you all don't like me, but at least listen to what I'm saying. Because I know what I'm saying is good. Because I believe it myself. You become what you consume. Big thinkers produce big vision. That's what we need. Nothing has ever been done worthwhile by a pessimist. Nothing. A negative person has never changed the world. It's always the man or woman who could see more than their eyes could look. They're the ones that change the world. Tell your neighbor, I see something. And it looks better than what I see now. Aren't you glad God gave you vision? The house you live in ain't the one you see. So you can tell your house when you go back home, you are temporary. Hello? The car you go into in the parking lot. I want you to walk out there talking to the car. Tell the car, you ain't what I saw. So you definitely just passing through. Clap your hands and thank you. Use your faith. Speed unto me just like he said it. In the name of Jesus. What do you see? Is it big? Nothing has ever been done without vision. Nothing. The old woman, Helen Keller, she was born blind, born blind. Never saw anything. Born blind. Deaf. Dumb. Helen Keller learned to read Braille. Helen Keller wrote poetry that became Nobel Peace Prize quality. She became a sought after leader. She gave us speeches by writing on paper and showing the people and then write and show. This woman was sought after. She was paid honorariums and couldn't talk. 
How much mouth do you have? Walter Cronkite was interviewing her one day. Old woman, almost 80 years old, shaky, Helen Keller. He put a mic in her face and he said, Miss Keller, she can talk now. Miss Keller, what could be worse than being blind all your life? She picked up a pencil and she wrote an answer. And she showed it to him. And the answer was being born with eyes but no vision. Some of y'all got four eyes, you got glasses. And you still ain't progressing. She had no eyes and became a world leader. Because you don't need eyes to have vision. Today, God has sent me into your life to stir up something that your eyes cannot see. Vision. A couple of comments on vision. Write this down. It is said that the poorest man in the world is not a man without money. It's a man without vision. Famous verse, King Solomon. Proverbs 29, verse 13. I think it would be important for you to read this with me because I don't want you to miss this interesting revelation. Please get your Bibles and turn me to the book of Proverbs. I want to read this. Allow me to read this, please, with you. Proverbs chapter 29, verse 13. Uh, before we read that, can you please go to Proverbs chapter 22? Proverbs chapter 22. When I first read this verse, I became mad at God. Angry at God. Matter of fact, I became so angry. I was tempted to curse God. This verse. Let me read it with you. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 2. Let's read together out loud. The rich and the poor have this in common. What is it? The Lord is the maker of them all. Now that made me angry. Because when I read that, I was in Bain Town. Think about the verse. Bain Town, my son, are you a visitor? Bain Town is like one of the low-income areas of our country. Maybe in your country you call them the ghettos, eh? I read this in a house made of wood on four stones. I read that. Read it again. Imagine, you're sleeping on the floor in a wooden house with mosquitoes and rats and you read this. The rich and the poor have one thing in common. God made both of them. I mean, that can make you mad because you are the poor one. So my first thought was, wait a minute, God made Kellys and God made Monroes. God made the Kellys rich and the Monroes poor. This God cannot be fair. And then I went to race and I really got mad then. I said, okay, so God made poor people, God made rich people. So if you're poor, God made you that way. And if you're rich, God made you that way. Therefore, that's your destiny, to be poor. That's depressing. I became angry at God. I was about to curse God, and God says, you only read half of the story. 
Very interesting story. I was reading this whole book. You see, teenager reading this book. And I kept reading. And I kept reading. When I got to chapter 29, it appeared again. But this time, God completed the sentence. Let's read it. Chapter 29, verse 13. The poor man and the rich man have this in common. Underline it. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. I rest my case. Here's the way it's written in the Hebrew language. God creates all men. Some become rich, some become poor, depending on how they see. That's what that means. Make a clap. Your vision determines your future. What you see determines what you become. A wealthy man is not better than you. He just sees differently. Two college students went to visit India, Bombay, took off time from college that summer, got their backpack, a couple of blue jeans and a t-shirt, didn't have no money, saved enough money from their jobs to take a trip, one trip to India. Their dream was to go to India, travel over the, 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 the Indian nation. And they went and they caught these trains and they were, they were sleeping in hostels and, and they went across the big cities of Bombay and Calcutta. And, and when they went to Calcutta, they saw something they never could forget. Two young men, all the way from the west coast of the United States, cut off jeans, t-shirt, on an adventure. And they came into Calcutta and there were millions of I mean, India is the second largest country in the world. That's where they went. Today they got one billion people. One billion. You can't imagine that as a Bahamian. We got 300,000. We don't know what we're talking about. One billion people in one country. Calcutta alone is almost 50 to 60 million people in one city. They are sleeping on top of each other. They are living in the streets. They are in poverty because the government cannot handle the pressure for the social demands. And so the people got to sleep in mud. They got to build their houses out of, of pieces of paper and cardboard and tin. And they got to go and, 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 and steal trash to, to, to make their rugs and their beds. I mean, it's filth. And these young men saw this and they came to the city and they, they couldn't believe what they saw. They came to the train and there were just thousands of people in the streets sleeping on the ground, man. Flies everywhere. People with, with all kinds of disease. Sleeping in the mud, nowhere to sleep. And they saw them in the morning get up and they like a big hall of animals just, just going to this market and then going to the next market. Everyone's just trying to find, begging and trying to make a living. And one of the young men said, wow, man, look at the people, dirty feet, filthy people, thousands of dirty feet, no shoes. His other friend looked at the same people and says, wow. What an opportunity for a shoe business. So his friend Tom came back to the United States. They got back, went back to college. Tom couldn't get what he saw out of his head. He sat down in his classroom and designed a shoe, a plastic shoe. He wanted something that could be very easily purchased and cheap. And he designed a shoe and took it, got it patented, and went to one of his friends who knew a manufacturer and says, can you let your manufacturer friend see this? I believe that we could really do something with the people in India. And his friend took it and the guy made a prototype of this plastic shoe. And he said, it works. And so he said, would you be willing to export this to India? The manufacturer says, sure, you get marketing and we get business. It costs us 15 cents to make the shoe. We sell it for $2. No problem. So they started exporting shoe to India. This young guy. This young man dropped out of school, man. Started pumping his business. Shoes took off, exploded. 
He sold 100,000 in the first year, 300,000 second year. By the fifth year, he was selling millions. He became a multi-millionaire. His name is Tom. We call him Tom McCann. Now you just buy his shoe. The guy who went to India with him is trying to pay his mortgage off. Why? They saw the same thing. Or did they? Ah. Write this down. Every problem is a business. Some people are looking for jobs. You don't need no job. You need a vision. Walk around. Get out of a bed. Don't be stupid and lazy. Get out of bed and walk around. Some folks sit around waiting for a job. Go look for a problem. Let me tell you right now. My car is dirty. That's a problem. A lot of cars are dirty. That's a problem. Open a business. Five dollars for a bucket. Two dollars for a sponge. 395 for joy lotion dishwashing lotion start your business stop looking for a job find a problem hey boy say vision the bahamas is filled with businesses and we pass them by every day it's filled with businesses folks look at your community find the problem How do you see vision? As soon as 9-11 took place, believe me, dreamers went into action. They didn't panic, they went into thinking. They're the ones who make the millions. They decide they're going to create some new screening machines. Somebody figured that out, eh? Somebody said, okay, we got to create some new security training companies. Someone got to think that up. Hmm? Cuba opening is not a problem. It's a business opportunity. Imagine the world without Castro and then start preparing. Come on, Bahamians, talk to me. You got a plan. What the ten things may happen after Castro died? The ten things. And pick out three and make them your future. You don't panic, you plan. You don't panic, you prepare. You don't panic, you plan. When the economic boom fell out in the United States, everybody thought, oh boy, poverty is going to sweep the U.S. in the 1930s. Eh? Do you know who became the millionaires during that time? <laughs> the doctors, the psychologists, and the motivational speakers. Because when people are depressed, they need someone to cheer them up. You all don't understand. So you call it... <laughs> economic downturn. No. It's an opportunity for new businesses. But only those with vision can see that far. That young man didn't see bare feet. He saw a shoe industry. Can I hear an amen? amen. Some of you need to be smart. If I was, if I had the time, if I wasn't already on a track with my vision here in this ministry, I would have started a horse farm. A horse farm, that's right. Just to grow horse tail. <laughs> see, you see, you see, you see, you, see you, you, you ain't got no vision. All you're doing is buying the tail. You ain't thinking about producing the tail. Clap your hands. You need vision, man. Right. <laughs> you see where they're going, so go for it. Buy a horse farm. Say amen, somebody. 
Hey, boy, say, boy, pastor, got a vision now. Yeah, you, you check where they're headed and prepare for them. Have a vision. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And things so tough, I promise you, you'll never be out of business. Never be out of business. Not be here, we'll always be here. All right. <laughs> let, me, let me close. I got to finish this next week. Can I finish this next week? Are you happy you came here today? Let me finish this, this couple of thoughts and we're going to close because I don't want to keep you. Your vision determines your destiny and therefore you need to make sure your vision is correct. I want to give you a definition. I want to read a scripture and then we're going to close. Here's a definition of vision. What is vision? What did, these young, what, what, what did this young man see? What made him so different? Here's what it is. Vision is an internalized, clear mental image of a preferable future. That's what the vision is. Here's the future I prefer. You see it. You see it. This preferred future is a result of God imparting through inspiration to your spirit man. That's why vision is really from the spirit to the heart of man. God never deals with the present. Because the present to God is already history. God always deals with the future. He imparts the future to the present. So the present will not be depressed. Do you know what a promise is? We always talk about the promises of God. A promise is the future being told to the present. That's a promise. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it says the promises of God are all yea and amen. In other words, God always tells you about your future and it's better than the past and the present. And he wants you to live not on the present. He wants you to live on the future. Right now you are broke. That's the present. Don't live in that. Otherwise you'll be broke. <laughs> live on the promise. My God shall supply. All of my needs, which means that my present got to be temporary. So I'm not, I'm not broke. It's just that my money ain't arrived yet. See, a, vision, a visionary never sees pessimistic vision. Thank you for listening to Crowning Ignorant Kings, where we are cultivating a kingdom community. Please sign up for our podcast. Download, like, and share. Look for us on your social media platforms. If you'd like to reach out to us, please send us an email at crowningignorantkings at gmail.com.